Shabbat brothers and sisters and welcome to our happy Sabbath. As you can see I've been joined by brother Carl again this year, this week and we thank you for him being with us on this Sabbath day. On this Sabbath day the 27th of January 2024. We're just seeing in our new year and uh we want to talk about peace today and and uh, Carl's going to read a prayer from Christian Aid, uh, a prayer for Ukraine. So if I hand over to Carl. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I would like to read this prayer for you. A prayer for the Ukraine. Lord of all people and all nations, we lift before you the people of the Ukraine, each girl and boy, each woman and man, living in fear of what tomorrow might bring. We long for a time you spoke of through your prophet Isaiah, when weapons of war would be beaten into plowshares. The nation will no longer lift up sword against nation. We cry out to you for peace. Comfort those who fear for their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Change the hearts of those who are set on violence and aggression. Fill earthly leaders with great wisdom to find the paths of peace. May your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. May your peace reign now and always. Amen. Amen and thank you for that prayer. Carl, that's from Christian Aid. Uh, you can see the leaflet there and uh, there and we just hope they do a prayer for uh, Israel and, oh, yeah. yeah and the Holy Land so maybe that will come up soon and as you know today is Happy Sabbath it's Sabbath day the day of rest for us Christians the actual day is Saturday and we're going to share the sacrament with you today from the Book of Mormon the prayer comes from. And it comes from the Book of Mormon, the Restored Covenant Edition. And uh, hopefully you've got your emblems ready, your bread to represent the skin and your wine or water to represent Jesus' blood. So we're going to go to the scriptures now. And um, I'm going to ask Carl what he wants to do, the bread or the wine? After the wine. To the wine. Okay. So I'm going to say the bread prayer, which is in Moroni 4 and starting from verse 4. Okay. At this time, we welcome our present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So just bear with us, if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever is your preference. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify 
this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of thy body of thy Son, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So as, as we take that time, we, uh, we prepare to take the wine, uh, the prayer for the wine. So I'm going to ask Carl, and if you would like to bow or kneel, whatever your preference is, as we pray for the wine. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you guys about what I like to call the evolution of Moses. Now, I want to preface this with something. I'm going to be coming at this from a Kabbalistic perspective. So I, I don't know. I do believe that Moses was a real person. I don't know that I believe that everything happened the way that it's described in the Old Testament or in the Torah of Moses and the plates, plates of brass. Um, I... I do believe that Moses led the people. I do believe that he took them to a mountain and, and you know made the covenant. But I believe that he came back and converted people based on archaeological evidence. I believe that he came back and converted people. I don't believe the genocide mentioned in the Bible or even in the Torah of Moses. I, I don't know that that really happened. I, I think that that is a Kabbalistic idea, a Kabbalistic teaching of us getting rid of the wicked, selfish desires inside of ourselves. I, I think that, that that's a story based on some historical truths, but taken to extremes to make the story more interesting so people will share it with one another to teach a lesson. Uh, so the reason why I'm telling you that up front is because I'm going to be using the story of Moses from Third Moses, from the Plates of Brass, because it goes into more detail than what we read in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. And I want to touch on a number of things where we can do a little bit of a deeper dive because this Moses that we're going to talk about today and Aaron and Miriam and Zephora and Pharaoh and, and all the Israelites and all the Egyptians, they're us. So if I say something and you think to yourself, well, that's not the way it happens in the Bible, um, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I want you to be able to hear this message and hear the spirit of this message. It's my prayer that we can speak spirit to spirit so you can use Moses' story to better understand yourself, your own doubts, and how to work through those doubts. So in the third chapter of Moses, the third chapter of third Moses, I should say, um, that's where we're going to start here in the Plates of Brass. And basically, you know, Moses was a military leader raised by the, the Pharaoh, who is seen as both a king and a god by his people. He murders someone, Pharaoh, an Egyptian, for beating a uh, Israelite. So he has to leave because Pharaoh finds out and says, hey, we're going to kill this guy. Uh, I know I raised you like a grandson, but you killed an Egyptian. We got to put you to death. We don't want the the Hebrews to uprise. We don't want a Hebrew uprising. 
Um, so he leaves and he, he gets ordained by Jethro and marries Jethro's daughter, Zephora. And now he's up on this mountain. He's a shepherd. He's gone from being a military leader, son of what the Egyptians believed to be a god and others understand to be a king, all the way to now he's a humble shepherd up on a mountain herding sheep. And the voice of the Lord comes to him and the angel of the Lord comes to him. And he gets a call to his ministry. He sees this burning bush. He sees a miracle. And in verse 4, this is where the doubt comes in. He says in verse 1, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto you. And so the Lord says, What's in your hand? And he teaches him how to do some miracles. He teaches him how to turn a rod into a snake. He makes his chest leopardous and then heals himself. You know, these these different miracles. Even after learning how to do these miracles, he's like, hey, you know, I, I can't speak. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. Besides, they want to kill me anyway. So the Lord's, you know, I'm gonna, he's going to take away all of his excuses. Look, I'm sending you back now because that Pharaoh's dead. He's gone. There's a new guy and nobody remembers you. All the people you used to know, they're all gone. They've been wiped out. So... Everything's fresh. Don't you worry about that. Well, I can't speak, he says. Not a problem. At this point, the Lord's getting angry at him. I'm, you know, I've sent your brother Aaron. He's on his way to meet you. He can speak. You tell him what to say. I'll tell you what to say. You tell him what to say, and he'll say it. Every excuse that Moses comes up with gets taken away. He just has all these doubts. And so now he's like, okay, well, you know, God's told me to do this. What do I do? I, I got it. I'll go and tell my father-in-law that I have to take his daughter and his grandkids and we've got to leave and go back to, to Egypt. And he knows what happened in Egypt. So he'll say no. But of course, Jethro is the one that ordained him to the priesthood. Jethro knows what's going on with Moses uh, and, th- then, and that he's been called. And so he tells Jethro this, and Jethro says, "Oh, go, go, go do, go do this ministry that you've been called to. Yeah, go for it." So all of his excuses are getting taken away. So now they're traveling, and he's being followed by the angel of the Lord and the angel of death. And he's like, oh man, you know, maybe I'd rather die than have to do this. And so he starts trying to make excuses to his wife. He's like, hey, you know, we didn't circumcise my son, which is a thing that we do in in my in my with my people. So the Lord might kill me for not doing that. And Zephora, she calls him out. She's like, hey, I'm a high priestess. I'm ordained too. I saw the angel of death and I saw the angel of the Lord just like you did. I know what's going on. Quit being a coward. And so you know, you want your son circumcised? Let's circumcise it. Then she cuts herself with a rock and throws it at him and says, you know, we're one. If you're called, then I'm called. We're in this together. So get yourself together and let's do this. And at that point, all his excuses were gone. And he's like, okay, he committed it. You know, I've shamed myself in front of my wife, my children. I'm, 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 I'm going to do this thing. So now he's committed. Now, I want to take this and I want to look at the Book of Mormon for a second. I, I'll put it in the description below. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's chapter 32 of Alma in the OPV. I just don't remember what it is in the RAV, the, the Community of Christ version of the Book of Mormon. Um, but basically, it's that idea of faith being like a seed. Now, think about this. Moses has literally seen an angel, talked to God, seen the burning bush, performed miracles. Now, I believe that Moses had to have the first three in order to to have the faith to perform the miracles. But he's done all this, but he just doesn't have the faith in himself to do this thing. And this is a military leader. This is a guy who used to go in with with armies and fight, take over nations. If if you read some of the stories uh, from, uh, I think it's Josephus, it, it talks about this. So this is a guy who was Egyptian royalty. The idea of thinking he can't do something, to me, that that almost doesn't even make any sense. He's been trained to lead people. He should know how to do this. 
but he just doesn't have the self-confidence. But at this point, that seed is planted. He's run out of excuses and he's ready to move forward in the Lord. Now, I want to take this and I want to talk about our desires, our doubts. The Lord calls us to do things. Sometimes they're simple things. It, it's funny. There was a, a lady once who I, I had gotten to a point to where financially everything was fine, except I did not have money for food. And this woman came to my work with, she said, I was at Sam's Club. It's a, if you don't know what Sam's Club is, it's a, it's a chain of, of warehouse type stores where you buy food in bulk. And, and she felt the spirit telling her to buy extra food. This is decades ago now. I was a lot younger. And uh, she said, come out to my car and take whatever it is that you need to feed yourself for this month. And and I'll, I'll be honest, I was at a point to where I was ready to go. I was a brigham at the time. I was ready to go to the LDS church and say, hey, look, I need food. But I grew up in that Brigham Young welfare system. I did not want to get on it. And I was begging God, please help me so that I don't have to do this thing. And the Lord blessed me through this woman. She gave me a month's worth of, of food. Obviously, it was a lot of canned food, but I didn't go hungry. In fact, it lasted even longer than a month. It, it Some of it lasted until after I had moved out of that apartment complex. Um, I, I was truly blessed by the Lord. But she almost didn't come. She told me that she was embarrassed about this idea of thinking, am I going to embarrass this man by asking him if he needs welfare? And she really put herself out on a limb and what she saw is a huge risk coming to help me. Personal risk. She didn't want to embarrass me and she didn't want to embarrass herself. But she followed the Lord. She, that seed was planted and she followed through. So sometimes when we have doubts and we think we're not good enough. It's Satan trying to stop the Lord's plan in action. I was very, very grateful. And I let her know that she was literally answering my prayers. I didn't talk to this, this woman very much after that, but... I would like to think that that helped grow that seed. That she was able to now help more people because she had blessed my life. It's funny, she, she said, you know, I've read stories like this in the Enzyme. And, and, and I just thought to myself, well, maybe you know, I'm just reading the story and reading too much into it. You know, uh, I know you're, you're new to the area and you're young and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have everything you need. So when that doubt comes... It's the action of moving forward that allows us to prove the Lord correct. So with this seed planted, you see as you're reading through the text, I'm not going to sit and read it to you. It would take too long. I'll, I'll go into this in more detail when I get to this in the Mormon Kabbalah podcast, to these chapters. But it starts out with Moses telling Aaron what to say. And Aaron performing the miracles that Moses teaches him how to do. But at some point during the plague, something clicks. And Moses realizes that he is who he's called to be. And at that point, he's the one talking to Pharaoh. He's the one performing the miracles. And when they leave, he's the one that raises his hands and divides the sea so they can cross. It's not Aaron anymore. Because you see this evolution of Moses growing grace by grace as he gains faith in himself. We know he has faith in God because he's able to perform the miracles on his own, alone with the Lord and, and the sheep, the herds, they're in the mountains. So we know he believes in God. 
what he doesn't believe in is himself. And I think that this is a very important lesson that we need to learn and understand as we're growing in Christ's grace. I want to backtrack a little bit. One of the things that's interesting about the, the story as it's presented in Third Moses is as Moses, you know, shows the miracles to Miriam and Aaron, you know, they believe, everybody's all happy. And then they go and they divide up. And um, Aaron is speaking for Moses with the men. And Miriam is speaking for, I guess, Moses or Zephora, because they don't know Zephora. She's a foreigner to them, um, for the women. And it says something very interesting. It says that the men were shown the signs and they believed. But the women believed without seeing the signs. Remember that the male represents the desire to bestow and the female represents the will to receive. It's easier to receive. And it says that the women are more blessed. The women are more blessed because they didn't seek a sign. Very similar to the story of Doubting Thomas, right? You believe because you have seen. More blessed are those who believe without seeing. But sometimes in order to bestow, in order to give, we need a sign. Because we've been taught, at least in American culture, that helping others is, is wrong or bad. And in the same token, we've been taught in American culture that receiving help from others is bad. And here the Lord's saying, I will give you a sign to go and help. And it's better to allow people to help you without a sign. You'll be more blessed if you don't need the Holy Spirit to tell you. Because think about this. The woman I mentioned before who came and and gave me food. Did I need the Holy Spirit to tell me that this woman was supposed to, to help me? I'm more blessed because I was willing to receive and that allowed her to give. How can we be a people that gives if there's no one that can receive? Because receiving is wrong. If it's great to help other people, but it's bad to receive help, there's no one to help. Now, I want to transition to one last thing here. I, I, for those of us that are, are faithful believers, this is a great story talking about how we can grow in in. I like to call it our ministry, but whatever it is the Lord, whatever role it is the Lord wants us to play in in this creation. It doesn't it doesn't literally have to be a ministry where you're a, a pastor out there preaching the gospel. It can also be someone just giving a homeless person money. But I want to transition this into doubts in God and religion and faith itself. Growing up a Brighamite. I was always taught that, you know, if you're, if you're having doubts, that's, that's normal. It's okay. The way to fight it is you just say your prayers, read your scriptures, and keep coming to church. And, you know, follow the prophet. And, and as long as you do those things, you'll be blessed. And so, therefore, when someone leaves, it's because they weren't doing any, either one or more of those, of those things. But the problem is that it's only partially true. It's like it's like a sidestep to the truth. It's a very superficial truth. It's trying to get people to believe in a church. And I'm not trying to fault them for this. They're doing with but you know the best that they know. What I learned 
in going out and trying to bring people back and working with, with inactive people and people who had left their church through their missionary program that I worked in. I was never a full-time missionary, but I spent quite a bit of time as a, a ward or stake missionary for them. The thing that I learned in doing that is it's not just, okay, say a prayer, read a book, go to church. That's a mechanical thing. We're not robots. Prayer is a meditation. You have to get a personal relationship with God. And you can't do it if you're looking solely at an organization. You have to look at God directly and then see God in the parts of that organization that reflect God. So meditate, pray. When you pray, don't say the things you want because you're building a personal relationship with God and you trust the Lord. What does the Lord want you to pray for? And that can be hard because sometimes the Lord wants us to pray for things that we don't know that we want or need. And it, it just doesn't make sense to us at that time. Read your scriptures. I love the Book of Mormon. Anybody that is familiar with these videos or the, the website or me at all knows I love the Book of Mormon. So what does it mean then to study your scriptures? Does that mean we need to read the Book of Mormon? Maybe. Your scriptures are whatever it is the Lord's telling you to read. I believe that the Torah of Moses is important, so I'm going to encourage you to read that. I believe the Book of Mormon is important. I'm going to encourage you to read that. I believe that the Bible is important. I'm going to encourage you to read that, and, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to tell you right now, if the Lord tells you to read a book on gardening, read a book on gardening. That's your scriptures. If the Lord tells you to read a book on quantum mechanics, read a book on quantum mechanics. That's your scriptures. If the Lord tells you to read a book on programming in Python, Read it. That's your scriptures. Don't only read those things. You still read, you know, the Book of Mormon and other scriptures. But if that's what the Lord wants you to study, study it and take it to the Lord and take it seriously. Because there's something in there that the Lord has for you. And then the last one, keep going to church. Follow the prophet. Well, it's easy to follow the prophet, right? What did Jesus say? The Torah, the law, and the prophets rest upon the law of love. Love God, love your neighbors. So it doesn't really matter what branch of the faith you're in and which prophetic leader it is. Whatever it is they're saying, how does that help you love God and love your neighbor more? Figure that out. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're reading whatever it is you're studying and you know whatever it is that you're, the, the prayers that you're doing are leading you to do, if it's telling you, to start instead of going to a church every Sunday, but instead go to a homeless shelter and physically feed people, that's your church. If it tells you to take your family to the park and go on a hike, that's your church. If it tells you to go to the church down the road and be a part of that community, that's your church. It's not a particular place out here. It's a place in here that allows you to be a part of the community the Lord has prepared for you so that you can help build that community and prepare it for the other people that are coming. So please keep in mind that as we are growing in grace, it is normal to have doubts in ourselves and in God. We've got to get ourselves to the point to where we're willing to plant that seed, experiment, See what happens. See what grows. I testify to you that if you do this honestly seeking, not for what someone else is telling you God is or God wants from you, but to find out for yourself who God is to you and what it is that that relationship looks like for yourself you will find it. I can share my views on how those things work till I'm blue in the face. But at the end of the day, they're only going to help you as they pertain to you. And they may not pertain or relate to you at all. 
And that's okay. God meets us where we are. You will grow to a point to where you hear someone that has a completely different view of God than yours. And it will teach you. And you will learn from it. But you have to grow to that point. You have to start off as the seed. So as you find this Moses inside of you, seek out the Aaron, the Miriam, and the Zipporah inside of you. And together they will work to lead the Israel inside of you out of the bondage that is the Egypt inside of you, away from the Pharaoh that is inside of you. And eventually, all those wicked desires inside of you will be drowned in a flood of the mercy of Jesus Christ. The floodwaters represent the mercy of Jesus Christ. And you'll be washed clean. Again, just like you were the first time you came to Christ. Because you're growing in grace. You're moving away from egoism and towards that Christ-like altruism that makes us the prophetic people of God that we've been called to be. So that is my Sabbath message, and I'll leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I would like to wish all my brothers and sisters a very happy and peaceful Sabbath. May God bless and be with you all, always. In his most holy name, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you as we come to an end to our sacrament service. And we just ask to bless your week. And we pray for those people that are in our prayer book. Uh, you know their names. You know their situation, God. But we add our prayer for the Ukraine to that. To that into our book as well. So, on a Wednesday we... On a Thursday, sorry, we come together at night, uh, three of us at the moment, but hoping to get more. And uh, I place my hands on that book and we, and we pray for those people, but we add to it. Uh, so that's on a Thursday night. Uh, above me or below me will be the Fellowships, Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowships website address. And maybe if you'd like to get back and leave a comment on the video, if you'd like to know more about our fellowship. And that God welcomes everybody. Not just one sort of people. Everybody can come to Christ and can be forgiven for the things they do in life. So it's a happy Sabbath from me. And a happy Sabbath from me, Kyle. God bless you all. Peace be with you.